Bangkok is a huge metropolis with a population of about 10 million, which has been the capital of Thailand since 1782. The city is built on swampland bordering the Chao Phraya River. The Klongs, canals lined with houses on stilts, still reflect the face of the city as it was in the 19th century during the reign of the builder king, Rama IV. On the east bank of the Chao Phraya River lies the French ambassador's residence. This is where the ambassador sent by Napoleon III moved in, in 1858. A few years later, Rama IV gifted the house and its land to France. From the Gulf of Thailand, the Chao Phraya River flows through Bangkok and meanders north for over 350 kilometers. For centuries, it was considered a natural defense protecting the town from threats from the Burmese. The River Chao Phraya, which in Thai means the Lord of Waters, was for a long time the only route for foreign trade. Heir to the dynasty, King Rama IV ascended to the throne in 1851 at the age of 47. But he had never wanted to become king. When he was 20, the young Prince Monkut had only one dream, to become a monk. We are at Wat Bawon, in the historic center of Bangkok. Wat Bawon is one of the most famous Buddhist temples in the city. This morning, the temple is buzzing with excitement as they prepare to ordain some new disciples. Natakrit is preparing to become a monk. May this training bring you success and prosperity without impediment, free from all enemies and evil beings. I wish you a long life, happiness and good health. When the parents cut their child's hair, it's a way of giving him their blessing. They bless them as a good omen. Being ordained is very important to us. It's considered a duty which all Thai men must fulfill at least once in their lives. First, the novice's hair is completely shaved. Then, in a feature specific to Buddhism in Thailand, their eyebrows are also shaved. First the novice, then the father, then the mother and the family members afterwards. Aged 31, Natakrit wanted to become a Buddhist monk to honor his parents. Before being ordained, the novice is thought of as being ignorant as he has not yet received training for his soul. Being ordained, according to the Buddhist religion, means studying and training the soul. I feel good. I have been able to do something good. I have fulfilled my duty to my parents and I feel quite excited. Finally, the moment comes for Natakrit to don the saffron robe, a simple tunic which symbolizes renunciation and humility. 
Thai men can be temporarily ordained and wear the monk's robe for as long as they wish. Natakrit has chosen to spend four weeks at Wat Bawan. It's a royal temple and it's an honor for my son to be received for ordination here. Our king, Rama IX, was himself ordained here. In 1836, Rama IV became the first abbot at Wat Bawan. This statue is a tribute to him. Rama IV remained here until he ascended to the throne of Thailand. He carried out great reforms in the way Buddhism is taught. Before him, holy texts were mainly handed down orally. But the new abbot was responsible for printing the first religious books in Thailand. Thanks to King Rama IV, everyone from then on was able to study original Buddhist writings and make their own interpretations. King Rama IV's main legacy is don't believe. This is don't believe just anything. You have to study, research and create your own experience. That's what training of the soul means. That's how King Rama IV created a modern vision of the strange. But I'm happy to live by the rules of conduct taught by Buddhism. It's like rejecting all the conveniences of modern life in order to be free of them. And in a sense, put an end to your suffering. Thai culture is not based solely on spirituality. A real art of war has been established over the centuries. It has given rise to Mao Thai, Thai boxing. For centuries, the greatest Thai boxers have been selected from across the country to join the King's Guard, a supreme honor. Today, the art has become an extremely popular sport and, surprisingly, its chief ambassadors are French. <laughs> this is Antoine Pinto and his brother Victor. Between them, they hold the titles of world champion, European champion and best Muay Thai boxer in Thailand. Born in the Pyrenees, they came here with their parents 12 years ago. About 50 to 100 meters from where we first lived, there was a small boxing club, a small gym, and we could see the kids running past our house every day. And we just followed them because we wanted to make friends. We learned to count doing sit-ups, we learned the language, and little by little, having fun in the gym, doing a bit of training, throwing kicks, talking with our friends, that's how we started Thai boxing. For several weeks, Antoine and Victor have been preparing for a very important event, the grand final of the Thai fight. It takes place in the center of Bangkok, opposite the royal palace. The competition is transmitted live on television, because in Thailand, Muay Thai is the national sport. Serge, Antoine and Victor's father and coach, is careful to respect tradition. It begins with the Mong Kon, the headband Muay Thai boxers must wear until the fight begins. The Mongkons have been blessed by the monks. 
And so they must be placed on the head of each boxer and member of the audience, because nothing that has been blessed in the name of Buddha can be trodden on. No one can rise above Buddha. Before the fight, so as to always maintain respect for tradition, Antoine bows before the king. The king's daughter has come in person to attend the final. It's going to be tough, very tough. Don't take any risks, but fight hard. You're the boss, you're the king. No one can touch you, you're the champion here. Muay Thai is a shrewd mix of sport and spirituality. And the winner is... Brett Antua Pinto! The ring is considered sacred and the fighters are true demigods. Wat Po is one of the first Buddhist temples built in the 18th century, when Bangkok became the capital of the country. The pagodas were built in honour of the first four kings of the Chakri dynasty, which Rama IV belonged to. Rama IV brought Buddhas here from all over the country. And there is a very precise reason for all these statues to be covered with gold. According to the texts, Buddha had 32 distinctive marks when he was born. One of which was a luminous and golden skin. That is why tradition holds that statues of Buddha must be covered in gold leaf. Thus, thousands of leaves of gold are used in Thailand every day to decorate the deities. Many are made in this workshop in Bangkok. Jinata Pasada's family has worked here for some 40 years. This is a sheet of unrefined rolled gold, which we cut into little squares. That gives us about 1,500 pieces. You can't stick the sheet on directly, partly because it's too expensive and also because it's too thick to stick. So, it has to be hammered to get really fine leaves of gold. Before that, the pieces of gold are put together in small packs about 10 centimetres thick, then handed over to the gold beaters. Here's another one. Is that one finished? No. Did you have lunch? 
Yes, I've eaten. Juan has been a gold beater for nearly 30 years. He puts the pack in a golden frame, which he beats continuously for about six hours. If you stop beating, then the gold will set. You have to hammer continuously, and every five minutes turn the pack over. You can only take a break after two hours, for five minutes, then start again. The art of gold leaf has sometimes produced amazing masterpieces. It's one of these that Wat Po is famed for. Not only covered in gold, its feet are inlaid with mother of pearl. According to Thai tradition, the 108 marks are auspicious signs. Close to the Buddha, in the Wat Po complex, is the center for conservation of teachings in the sciences, ancient arts, traditional medicine, and also massage. They date back to the mid-19th century. Gathered from texts which survived the destruction of Ayutthaya, or from oral tradition, the teachings are engraved in stone. Today, they still form the basis for teaching traditional medicine. This group of students has come to Thailand to train at the traditional massage school of Wat Po. These drawings indicate herbs, and here we have massage points. Each point represents a symptom, and each line links it to a text which is written here. For example, to treat stiffness, it's this point. The school is famous for teaching Thai massage. People come from all over the world to learn the ancient techniques. In this class, there are Swiss, Israeli and Brazilian students who have come to do a month's course. Gently, gently. Sit like a duck. Ah. And put my knee about back, line one or line two together. Two. Ah. Finger lock. Three up. Uh, three. One, two, three. Crack, 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 crack. If not crack, crack, it's okay, no problem. Everybody different body. People are often on medication. But ties treat pain, strains, and small sprains with massage. I think that Thai massage is the best. The masseur's concentration must be completely focused at the tip of his fingers. You must look on the person you are massaging as you would a member of your family, a brother or sister.
You have to put your heart into your work. Then the person being massaged can feel this heart through the masseur's fingertips. The heart of Bangkok never stops beating. It beats at different rhythms, which reflect the two faces of the city. Night reveals different sides to the city, where modern life and ancient traditions are constant companions. We are at Maggie Chu's, a club in the center of town where musicians from all over the world come to play regularly. Bangkok calls them to come back and it is an infinite source of inspiration. Today, the Golden City is confirming its status as a regional capital, whilst also trying to keep up their traditions.